So, just another one of the quick and handheld videos. So, quick and dirty, but even dirtier, if you will. So, this was just because uh, I was talking uh, to John actually about uh, my old hardware that I still use for my recent mixes, which is down here. That's a Denon DJ MC3000. That actually came out in 2011, uh, but got adapted in 2012 by most people, I would say. So, it's between eight and nine years old now, maybe an even, even a little bit more. Uh, but I still use that, and why do I do that? Well, that's of course because of the power of the remapping in Virtual DJ. Because it's a little old looking, right? It doesn't have anything. It doesn't have pads section. It doesn't have anything of, of the new stuff. It has a filter up, but only for filter. It all these things are basically missing, right? Um, so, but because of remapping, I can still use it, and I still use it for all the, the new features. So how do I, what have I done here? Well. Just a quick go over. Um, one of the things that is that it actually has eight hot cues. You need to new, use the little the little button below it, the little this thingy, to go to the, the last four. But still, it has eight of them. So I actually map that to be pads. So if you look up here, I have hot cues one and two, and there's hot cue down here too. But I've then mapped this button which is usually for video effects, so that uh, it actually does pad page swapping. So if I click this one, and you would actually see the the button colors change, but you can see it goes through some of my favorite pad pages. So I have all that functionality here. So let me just go through really quick some of them. So now we're back to hot cues. I can just play a track like that, of course. And then if I click it again, I now get stamps. So I have stamp separation like that. The last one, uh, that button. So removing the drums and the kickback and the melody. So I have all the stem separation on this very, very old controller, which I think is very cool. And now I have all of it back. So that's stem separation on this, uh, by the pad page. Then if I click again, we go, go to some multi effects. I've created that pad page myself, but it's pretty simple. It's just stacking effects, white pressed. Some other ones down here, like that. Next pad page is key, key cue. So I actually also have key play on this very old controller. Who would have thought? So I play again, and I have it set up to to go from a cue point. So we'll do and the time for. Like that, so key play. I have some, some auto drops, so what they do is they actually mix to the other deck, so I have to keep everything running, and of course the deck, uh, the, the other deck loaded, but now if I do that, I'm gonna do for instance, this one is a spiral, and then mix, so while pressed, and then when I let it go, it mixes. I actually got stuck, but you get the idea. Let's do that one more time. So something like this. So it makes us to the other deck. So that's pretty cool. So uh, it has to also have some with the Mobius effect. So same thing, except it's Mo Mobius instead of Spiral. So four different Mobius, what we can do. Like that, so automatically switches to the other deck, like that. And next pad patch is loop out, different kind of those, so we just do one of them.
It also has echo out on there. So that's all the outs, really. So that's all on the on the pad pages. Let's see whether there's more of them. No, then we're back to hot cues. So that's all the pad pages. Then I mapped uh, the key log over here. So it does uh, a pitch reset. So I go very slow, right down, 14% below, like this, and it goes slowly back to zero again. Since my key, key log is always on, that's how that's mapped. And another feature of that is actually key luck, which is also kind of, uh, no, no, sorry, it's also BPM luck. So if I uh, put it somewhere fast, and I go shift, then I lock together. So now if I do key luck, uh, which is now pitch reset, then it'll also adjust the opposite pitch, you see here, up here. So slowly going back, but also going back at the opposite deck. So if they were both playing, you could hear that they would be doing it together. So that's how I remap the, the key lock to do a pitch reset and pitch lock instead. What else have I done? Well, um, these two FX designs I never used. So I've uh, done quick stuff on those. So the first one is basically just a, a, sl uh, a slip, a slip uh, break uh, that goes away again. So it's slip break eight that you can download. So I play track and it's set to add a beat. And it starts again automatically. So that's a nice little effect you can just sort of throw on top of everything. The other one actually turns on the very new docking effect. So if I have that and then turn down the volume down here, I get the uh, that effect. Like that. Of course, it also works on the Q button. Turn it off again up here. So that's a way to get the very new ducking, uh, ducking echo uh, in here and get that working too on the serial controller. The, uh, then uh, the, uh, the pitch bands down here that I never use. So I just added some loop rolls for those. So the fast one and the slower one. So I think a quarter of a beat and half a beat. And then if I use the shift button, I can go uh, and go faster on the minus and slower on the plus. So longer length and uh, shorter length. So the shift, and I have a faster one down here. And a slow one over here. Like that, so not really supposed to do be done one-handed, I guess. But I met that down here, so I always have that available. And finally, they also the uh, the filter knob, and I actually mapped it to Shift Q. I mapped a switch, so right now it's set to filter on deck A. And if I then push Shift and Q once, and then it switches to vocals. If I do it again. Then it switches to echo. So now I have an echo on the filter, like the echo color effect. So one side is brighter and one side is, uh, is, is uh, the high one, high part one. So uh, I can of course use that also in combination with turn down the volume to do out like like that, if I want to. 
And the other one option I had was, just do it again, shift Q. Now it's filter again. Now it's vocals. So I was doing the, the vocals, so that's actually the vocal stem separation. So now I can do for mixing, remove the vocals and add, isolate the vocals to the right. And that's really, really great for beat mixing, I find, especially with pop where you maybe only have the original tracks. So there's no like extended mixes uh, where the vocals are gone and anything like that. Then you just create the extended mix, if you will, like by maybe editing a loop. And then it's excellent for beat mixing. So I, I find that I use that quite a lot. But that was really just um, a go through on how I've kept my very old MC3000 current, if you will. So uh, it really does all the, the, neat, the, the nice and needed new tricks, like handling pad pages with eight pads. It handles the new docking echo. It handles all the... Uh, the key play that is also pretty new. It also handles the uh, all the stem separation, and it also handles the part of the stem separation that's that's based on vocals that you can use on your filter uh, while mixing, either isolating it or or removing the vocals. All that stuff is possible now on uh, on this very old controller, just with a tiny bit of, of remapping. And in case you actually have an MC3000, I'll just uh, I'll just post the uh, the my mapping uh, with it, but remember that you won't have all the the actual pad pages because a couple of them were my own. But uh, just for for inspiration, I'll just post it a link to it uh, in this video, so so you can check it out if you want to. Okay, bye.